There's also no measurements, and then you cover the whole thing in cream cheese. So I'm really curious what this is gonna be like. Hi, I'm Alexis Deboshnik, and today I'm going to make a retro recipe from a 1950s edition of Better Homes and Gardens cookbook. Then I'm going to make my modern take on the same recipe. At the end, I'll try both of them and see which recipe excites me more. Let's get started. Today I'm gonna to make a frosted sandwich loaf, and I don't know about you, but I've never had one before. I don't know what they look like, and I've certainly never tried one. Okay, so while there are lots of photos in here, there's none of the frosted sandwich loaf, and the recipe looks pretty uh, sparse. There's also no measurements, and then you cover the whole thing in cream cheese. So I'm really curious what this is gonna be like. Let's see what happens. The suggested fillings here are crab and mayonnaise. It's like a tuna salad, but with crab. Pimento cheese and olives, and cream cheese and watercress. This feels like maybe a salt bomb waiting to happen. Olives are already salty, so is pimento cheese. While I think all of those on their own sound really good, I'm, I'm curious how they're all gonna work together. So I'm kind of fascinated by the recommendations that they give for other filling options. Peanut butter and honey next to the crab meat and mayonnaise. And it's just so kind of unlike recipes we have today, which are maybe just less cream cheese heavy. Next up, trim the loaf. So I guess you wanna take all the crusts off. Now I need to cut four slices lengthwise and try to make it as even as possible, but I've never, I've never done this. So in addition to all this cream cheese and mayonnaise, we're adding butter. So I think I'll start with the pimento on the bottom. I think to really make it stand out, it's gotta be a pretty thick layer. There was nothing in the cookbook that said that, but it's what my instinct is. You know, it's also interesting that this is gonna be really tall. It is gonna look like a, a cake. Oh, I wonder if it's like the idea is to be like an illusion cake. You know, those are really popular today. Okay, and now the watercress and cream cheese layer. You know, I do think aesthetically, the color combination looks pretty nice. Maybe, maybe it'll be great. So the recipe says at this point to chill it. I'm just not a cold sandwich type of gal. So I'm just gonna move to the next step. Before I get frosting, I need to address decorations. You're supposed to decorate it with, hold on, radish roses, parsley, ripe olives, nuts, or kumquats. Wild, this is wild. So I'm gonna make a few radish roses. They need to sit in some water, which helps them bloom, open up, if you will and with the cream cheese. I love cream cheese frosting, so this might be delicious. And it looks like nothing else goes in it. You just wanna whip it to get light and fluffy. Okay, the recipe says a three ounce package of cream cheese, but then it says that you're supposed to frost the tops and sides of the loaf. This is definitely not gonna be enough, but we'll see how far it goes. Thinking about this flavor combination, like what, what layers would I choose? You know, maybe adding like a pickle to the pimento could be really good, or even adding some more herbs. It's a little harder on the sides. Actually, no, the cre okay, cream cheese, guys, cream cheese. We should be using cream cheese for everything. It could be really fun to make this with like a theme. Like you could do a seafood theme. I could get on board with that. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I think I have to whip more cream cheese. I hope this cream cheese is enough. I feel like this is already a truly embarrassing amount, but guys, what have I done? Okay, in retrospect, I'm wondering if you were supposed to chill it to make it easier to frost. This really looks like a giant block of cream cheese, but I think it's gonna be all about the decoration. We have a very festive platter. I thought maybe I would transport it and then decorate while it's on the platter. Okay, this part seems really fun to me. And look at these beautiful little radish roses. I'm guessing these were served for parties. Maybe you'd want a very decorative sandwich loaf. Oh, I just had such a cute idea. Decorate the sides with like radish slices. And I think because this recipe is so vague and kind of like choose your own adventure, I'm just gonna do it. It's my frosted sandwich loaf. I can do what I want. You know, I can see the appeal. You can have most of the fillings like pre-made. You can assemble this really quickly. You can decorate it. If you mess up, you can just cover it up with a radish rose. Oh, okay, I love the sandwich loaf. My tune has changed. This is so fun. The frosted sandwich loaf recipe has served me well, but moving on to my very own 
recipe, which is going to be a whole tower of little tea sandwiches. Using the same bread, I've got a bunch of different fillings, so we're gonna have that color. You know, that was so great about the frosted sandwich loaf. We're gonna go skimpy on the cream cheese. We're gonna kind of lay off, and I think it'll just be like pretty and cute. You can kind of like get creative. When I was doing some research, you know, there's like all sorts of combinations. Some of the other combinations I saw were like strawberries and cream cheese. What is up with all the cream cheese? Beets and cream cheese, which sounds kind of good. Like the frosted sandwich loaf, I do want to slice off the crusts. That feels like a key component of a tea sandwich. And egg salad. You know, I was pretty generous with the fillings and I think that was actually a really good call just because you really got to see them. That's the appeal of it. And some chives, cheese. I will say I'm more into like cheese and mayonnaise than cream cheese. And cucumbers on top. My grandmother was really into cucumber and peanut butter sandwiches. And I've told many people that and they're horrified. And I'm like, it's a classic combination. So maybe that would be on my next tea sandwich. I really like this three tiered serving platter. It feels like there's a nod to the past, but it feels like it kind of elevates it and makes it a little more festive. For my last sandwich, I'm gonna do butter and radishes. You really wanna be generous on the butter and just a little salt. It'd be so cute to go to a brunch and have this little like tower of sandwiches. I did think that this was gonna look pinker, but it's like barely there. That's it. I'm gonna be honest, it doesn't have the same visual appeal as the frosted sandwich loaf, but it looks totally nice. But I'm gonna give them both a taste and uh, see what I really think, because that's really the most important part. I feel really giddy right now. I mean, now that I have them here, like this really looks much more exciting. So I guess it's time to taste. Okay, it looks kind of cool. The plain crab and mayonnaise is a weird look. Where does one start? I guess we'll just... Mm -mm. I literally can't chew it, it's all cream cheese. Wow, guys, that was that was something. Let me let me go for some crab now. There's so much cream cheese, and I guess I'll go for the cream cheese on cream cheese layer with the olive on it. That was a wild ride that I hope I never have to go on again. That basically tasted like just taking scoops of cream cheese and like just shuffling it in my mouth. You know, I will say the pimento and olives, you do lose the flavor. I did get like a hint of crab, but like it just kind of blends in. It's very strange. I do think like aesthetically, this looks really cool. I love the illusion, so fun to decorate, but flavor wise, this is not for me. Now to the modern take, looks less exciting but maybe taste-wise. I mean, egg salad sandwich. Oh, I'm so grateful. Mmm, mmm, mmm. I never thought radish and butter would be a palate cleanser, but it is. Flavor-wise, the tea sandwiches are way more my speed. They feel light. I like the mix of flavors feels a little more balanced. I think the frosted sandwich loaf is just so overpowered by the insane amount of cream cheese that there's like no escaping it. And you really lose the flavor. I think visually, hands down, frosted sandwich loaf, this is just so fun. It's a little more boring, but flavor wise, I mean, give me a regular sandwich any day. Let me know in the comments what kind of flavor combinations you would use if you made a frosted sandwich loaf. And let me know if you've ever actually made or had one of these before. I would love to know.